everyone welcome back to my youtube channel my name is karen reborn in case you're new here kindly consider subscribing to this channel and for the returning subscribers thank you so much for always coming back and appreciating my content on today's episode i want to talk about incident in the park by major mwangi from kenya you can follow from the last episode that I talked about what is the first story, Man of Awesome Power. So today we are getting to the next story which is this and I'm going to talk about it briefly. So kindly sit back and enjoy the analysis. So first of all, I'll, I'll be handling topic by topic or headline, headlines that I've listed here that I'm going to talk about through the book. First of all, we'll talk about the description of the city park. There's a vivid description at the beginning of the book. Um, how the condition of the park, they talk about the condition of the park, how people were lying on the park, the trees, the clock, the city clock that was, a, that was a frowning at the park. And all these are, are talked about, the ambulance, the welling ambulance, the cars that braid on the highway, and what a view so from this we get the vivid description of the park and we are also introduced to the people who are uh, coming out for lunch running on the streets looking for cheap food to to buy and then we are also major Mwangi also talks about the people that were just lying on the park having nowhere to go nothing to do and we also get the hawkers there the peddlers and all of that so this is a busy park so in vivid description there is uh, description of how the park looks like the city looks like what is there how trees are there and how um, there are there are let me let me read a part here from the park grounds if one lay facing east one look, looked up straight into the frowning faces of parliament city hall clock that one we are given here and again we can also see some rushed for the meat roasting places down the river road others joined the queues at the numerous the are queues at the numerous fish and chips joints where they dutifully swallowed soggy fried chips with watered down ketchup in a few seconds thousands or so strong swam had been swallowed up by the yawning concrete jungle with its usual idle curiosity the sleepy park witnessed this spectacle the park waited in an hour, the tide will return. So, uh, these people are now meeting by the park from the office, from work. They're going for lunch. They are making very large queues there, as we've seen here. And again, we can see that some people are now laying helplessly here. As the other people are rushing for cheap food, the other uh, group of people are just laying there with nothing. And the park has been described. It's so dirty. So... That is the vivid description of the book and you'll get to see more of it if you're going to read this book and secondly i'm going to talk about the dialogue at the pond there are two idlers at the pond and this pond it's written there's a warning there not do not feed fish it's an order that has been given there i hope you can see this um, yeah the bolded word there in capital letters so there's a warning there the fish are not supposed to be fed by anyone but these idlers come here and now they make stories along the fish pond as they throw earth or we can say yeah earth to the fish and the cigarette ends that were they were picking from that ground remember that ground is so dirty they're picking and throwing them from the conversation that they're having we can see this symbolism this symbolizes whatever is happening in the nation whatever is happening in the city there are those people because we can see there's this big fish in the pond and this big fish could not allow the other small fish to enjoy this is what he does he runs pick whatever has been thrown runs with it to the other side finding out it doesn't work or it was not uh, something that could be eaten he comes back it's not an uh, edible thing for them the fish comes back picks another thing and makes sure makes sure that no one is following the fish or no fish is going to follow after it so we can see that from this incident there are some people it symbolizes these people that are big this fish is called the great fish 
so some people are so great and they don't give chance for the other people to even maneuver in the city they cannot get what they want or what they desire or their needs in the city that is what we get to see and because of this uh, there's here they talk about did you know fish are like people no they are and then he said he turned and pointed at the frothing mass of fish looked at them he said he picked another loose piece of earth and dropped it into the water the fish exploded after it see that he turned to squint at the other man they have been doing that all morning watch this and then he picks another piece piece of earth throws it unto them and then and even a flattened cigarette end throws it to the fish and then the big one the mighty fish the big fish or the great fish takes it goes to a different place to eat it then comes back so this is what happens so we can say that from this story that we're given here about the fish and the the idler the dialogue that they're having between the two of them this uh, shows whatever is going to happen is a, a foreshadow of what, what is going to happen in the story thereafter where we are going to meet the constables so at the beginning we get to see these people arguing about the same having a dialogue about the same and the characters that are, uh, are given fish the characters that are given to them shows exactly what the government or the people in higher authority or the people that are in higher positions do to the people who are in lower the big people in the society so that is what we can see from this story getting to the next now we get to meet the true image that was portrayed by the story that were given was given at the beginning of the book now we talk about the violence there is now violence we meet this ice cream vendor we also meet the fruit seller this person uh, is selling fruits only to ensure that he raises money to pay the fine the underlying fine that he's supposed to to pay and even though he was doing this to raise the money people are not buying they're even shouting on the street and no one is buying you see that whatever they do doesn't match at all at all so he only earns five shillings and five shillings is not even enough to pay the fine that was underlying somewhere so whatever he does he he continues with the selling but the constables cannot allow this to happen they will have uh, to come look for the license from these people the identity cards and what have you and this is not even going to help at all because they can't even afford a license if someone only earns five shillings ten shillings in a day from selling that fruit it is so difficult and then the, the there are some people also who are taking advantage of this this situation and they're pretending maybe they're pretending to be them to be selling fruits or to be selling whatever and they are peddling drugs because we could see from here there were also drug peddlers and so speaking about this fruit fruit seller we get to see that the the constable the two constables comes and approach approach him and getting there they they are so harsh on the, on on this man and they want this man to pay the fine or they take the man to the to jail and the, this man is not willing and ready to go to jail reason being he gives the reason of uh, the tyrant judge the tyrant judge that w will not understand him so he's not willing he even says that i cannot i cannot just i have five shillings just take this he said extending his hand i have five shillings the constables now looked at the money in the old man's hand then looked at one another one shrugged that is all i have i've made today the fruit seller said so you can imagine that was all this man had made the constable grabbed him by a worn coat and shoved him along you will explain to the judge and then he says no license no identification the other picked up the fruit basket the three tried along the direction of the city i swear by my mother by my mother that is that is all i have the old man pleaded with the one holding him they agree they did not agree even after all this uh, conversation and pleading it was not uh, bearing any fruit and this man said that because of that tyrant judge because of what i've gone through it's better to run for my dear life to to get into the crowd to get uh, to be saved there other than going to face the judge 
in the coat. So that is why it picks, uh, it takes off and runs to the crowd. Getting there, someone twists him. By the time the constable ran up, the fruit peddler lay like a broken and twisted rag doll at the bottom of, this, of the ditch. Someone twisted his leg and then he fell into the ditch. And falling there, everyone in the crowd, people are shouting, thief, thief, thief. And this is where my question comes in. People were shouting thief, thief, and no one wanted to be uh, to be seen. You could not tell whoever was shouting. They were doing the, all this just behind. No one could tell whatever was uh, whoever was speaking. Again, the constables were after the same man. That uh, the person that they were referring as the thief can be the constables. Or could it be it's this man? Kindly comment down below if you know the answer to that. Okay, continuing, we see that this man meets his death. This man was running from a tyrant judge. This man was running because he, he did not have identification card. The police, the constables could not identify him. This man is now going to the mortuary to be identified there. So that is where we see the twist and the irony in this book. So um just to give you an overview of what i've been talking about this city there are peddlers there are uh, idlers killing time there the angry office workers they loiter us then there's violence that rises between the constable and the fruit seller and on seeing that he could not impress the constables if least to find refuge in the crowded city but instead the cops chase him and he falls into a ditch he's then condemned and hard for being a thief. No one even gives an ear to him to hear whatever happened or his side of story, but is now condemned as a thief. So, from this we get to see uh, the whole story of the incident in the park, how it begins with vivid description. It now goes to the story, the metaphoric story, the symbolism and the foreshadow of, uh, that we find the story of the fish. And then after that, they now we now meet these uh, constables together with this man who is now forced to take this dear life by running away into the crowd and the crowd do not welcome him at all in this city that is how they treat people so that is what we see the constables are showing corruption this man is trying and it's not even uh, enough for him even to pay the fine, but the lack of license. Remember, this man is really struggling. Getting a, or a, affording, affording a license is so difficult for a man who only vends fruits. It's so difficult. But they, they just the problems that people face in these big, big cities. These are some of the problems that you're going to see. So uh, we'll end there for today. But uh, I'm going to talk about the questions that are can be raised from this book one by one because if i talk about them now the video will be too long so we're going to talk about this to the questions and answer them many questions that are arising from this book and we're going to answer them one by one to this point thank you so much for always being there for me and thank you so much even for coming back to watch my videos and we're going to close it at that point ensure that you tell a friend to tell a friend ensure that you subscribe if you've not subscribed and thank you so much for your time and have a blessed time bye